Welcome to Essentials Explained. In this video, we'll be discussing bucketing continuous numeric variables to understand whether your small franchisees are benefiting from economies of scale. We'll be discussing a nested if statement in detail and other formulas you can use to accomplish the same task. Let's dive right in. What we wanna look at here is size of our small franchisees. So if I had a pivot table, I'll put this on a new worksheet and what we can pretty easily do is drag our owners, drag our ownership category. So put our categories into the rows, I'll put my dates into the columns and then I'll put revenue into the value section. You can see here, we have our different ownership categories. We have our different structures. I actually just want to get rid of these other ownership categories. So I'll just put that in a filter. I can select multiple of these. So if I wanted to look at, you know, all franchisees, I could do that. I just want to look at small franchisees. So now that I have these small franchisees and I just have this list, quick thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the number. So 38, we just did this in our count ifs, 38, that seems to tie, right? You lost one in the LTM period, which this is obviously not equivalent, but good indicator you have. 38 in 2020 and 2021. Next thing I want to do is I actually want to understand the average annual revenue of these stores. So I'm going to build a separate column called average annual revenue. And I'm just going to use the grand total and divide this by the period. So there are two years and eight months in my data set. So I'll do two plus eight divided by 12 gives me the average annual revenue of these different stores. I'm going to sort this pivot table. So right click sort largest to smallest gives me a pretty good sense already of the different sizes of my stores, right? And I can make this maybe gray just to show how it works. And so you already get a sense of the different groups, right? There's a maybe a relatively big group, maybe a smaller group. But if you want to actually bucket these into specific categories to get a number, there's a couple ways to do this. First way I'm going to show is with actually a nested if statement. I'll just put a couple criteria ranges here. So maybe we put, you know, 7,000, maybe we put 9,000, uh, 12,000 and 17,000. So I actually want to attach values to these. So I just put, I will put a zero here. And this first one, I'm just going to use a concatenate. So concatenate between, I'll just say this is less than 7,000. This next one is going to be a concatenation of 7,000 to my next value. So to 9,000, I can just drag that down. And then this last value will actually just be um, a concatenation of greater than 17,000. So I have all these different values. And maybe if I wanted to make this a little bit nicer, I could say, you know, threshold. This could be um, criteria. And maybe I make these bold. I may make this a little bit more obvious that this is an input. I think probably makes that easier to see. You know, I can put a, a border around this just to make it really clear. Great. I think that looks fine. So the next thing we want to do is build this bucket column. So I'll just call this, you know, classification. And what you can do is you could easily build this with a nested if statement. So if average annual revenue is less than 7,000, I lock that in place then I want to return less than 7,000 locked in place. If average annual revenue is less than 9,000 lock it in place, I want it to return seven to 9,000 lock that. If average annual revenue is less than 12,000 lock that in place, I want to return nine to 12,000. Uh, oops, let me make sure I lock that. If average annual revenue is less than 17,000 lock that in place. I want to return 12 to 17,000. If not, I want it to return greater than 17,000. I can do that and I could fill that down and that would work, right? You can see everything less than 7,000 is in the right bucket. Seven to nine is in the right bucket. Nine to 12 is in the right bucket. 12 to 17 and then greater than 17. So this works. This is fine. R really not a bad way to do it. I think there's probably an easier way to do it, which, which is my preference, but Again, here's a simple way to do this with a nested if statement that gets you your answer pretty quick and, and gets you a, a classification column you're looking for. 
Let's say you want to do this with a VLOOKUP, which is personally my preference, and I think a lot easier to write. So let's go through and we VLOOKUP. What's our lookup value? It's going to be our, our average annual revenue. Our table array will be this table here. I'll lock that in place. And then my column index number will be two. I'll take that. I'll fill that down. You can see I did the same exact thing. That was a lot faster, I think, and certainly got you the same exact answer. So I would prefer to use a VLOOKUP in this situation. I think it's a lot quicker. I think it's a lot cleaner. I think it helps you to not have to write some crazy nested if statement that no one is going to understand. But again, up to you, personal preference. So if you're interested in learning more about the VLOOKUP formula and best practices for bucketing continuous numeric variables, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for joining us here at Essentials Explained. We look forward to seeing you again soon.